I would prefer to remain captain of a ship than go and become governor of a state. So the how is only gets the military that it deserves, the police that it deserves. You know, everything is a microcosm of the society itself. If we have bad governors, bad leaders, it's because the society generated bad governors and bad leaders. That's all. Please hold on to that thought, Admiral Laila. We have to take a break now. We'll be back in a bit. Please stay with us. You've been quoted as saying, and I, 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 I'm, I'm inclined to believe that you are not uh, quoted out of context from what you said a little earlier, that the military and civilian elites should be held responsible for the military incursion into politics. It's a main actor in all of the political drama of the 1990s. Um, can you give us an insight into your reason for saying so? Well, as I mentioned, by our training, by our upbringing, uh, the military should always be subservient to the political authority. And that's just a basic fact that cannot be, uh, you know, wished that we are denied. So if anything changes this particular uh, maxim and means there's an aberration, there's a, a something wrong somewhere. Are you suggesting that the uh, civilian elites coaxed the military? If a society is such that law and order, you know, is the order of the day and the rule of law is the order of the day. You find that you don't have such things as coups or counter coups and all that and all that. We are now in a democratic dispensation. If we have governments that perpetuate themselves in place without the will of the electing public, then you start having uh, the kind of insurrections that we had in those old days. Let me give you an example. You know, even with our, um, the fact that the world doesn't accept military incursions and all that, we still had military incursions in places like uh, Pakistan, Egypt, and so on and so forth. You know, you don't want to create the fertile ground for such incursions. That means let us have good elections. Let us have one man, one vote, and let their votes count. Military incursions are not even, you know, any more serious or anything than civilian revolutions. You saw what happened in uh, Egypt, in Tariq Square and all that. You saw what happened in Libya and all that, and in several other places. Those places they call the developing world, where you have, you know, relative peace, is because the haves look after the have-nots. You have those social security schemes that ensures that you have a roof over your head. All the uh, uh, Maslow theory, the fact that you need a roof over your head, you need food, you need shelter, you need clothes over your back, and then the other things come by. If you don't have those, then you live in a castle. You live in a cage, more or less. You see our burglar proof, it looks, my house looks like a prison, doesn't it? <laughs> With the walls over and everything. Like everybody else. Yes. You see, I prefer to give the money I'm using for my burglar proof, for my uh, electric fence and all that, for use in the social security scheme in which we can look after those who would have to come to boggle me. You understand? We ought to be thinking of those schemes now. We cannot come up and say we don't have money to pay our teachers, our lecturers and all that. We need to do something about reducing the cost of governance so that we can spend money on development, we can spend money on education, you know? We cannot afford 18,000 Naira as minimum wage in Nigeria. Tell that to the Marines. You were once Minister of Health, one of the most troubled sectors yes. in Nigeria. Yes. As we speak for this interview, health workers are on strike. Yes, you, I, want to, I want to let you know that during those few months I was Minister of Health, there was no strike. All our institutions were running. We achieved 80% immunization in this country. And I was not a doctor. The World Health Organization called me. They wanted to give me an appointment. It was only when they saw my CV as I had no medical uh, training at all, I said, oh, where did you get all those uh, programs that you brought to us? I started the Rollback Malaria Program. As it's so world, uh, world famous now, I started it, and so on. So 
What I'm saying in effect is that you need good managers. You need good managers to manage resources. I'm talking of human and material resources. And that's one of our basic problems. All these mushroom bodies, this union, that union, that union, in a, in a, in a proper uh, um, society, we don't have unions in healthcare. We have to give them what they deserve proper pay, proper housing, proper everything, because without health, there's no wealth, you know? You know who are the best paid workers in the U.S. and in the U.K.? Those who mend the roads. They are the best, the highest paid workers. You know why? If they don't mend the roads, others will not function. Others will not function. So pay people according to what they input into your uh, society. It's not only economy. You were also Minister of uh, Commerce, Commerce and Tourism. Yes. Um, has there been any improvement in Nigeria's industrialization since your time as Minister? It's an evolution, and um, the life of a nation, um, you know, like if we talk of 1996 to now, is how many years? It's up to 20 years? Less than 20 years. Very short time in the life of a nation. So we need to have in place long-term plans and policies. You, you talked about those days when Nigeria was under uh, Commonwealth and um, sanctions, yes. as well as sanctions, sanctions in Africa, under yes. sanctions. Yes. That was a good opportunity for us to look inwards. How many times have we banned importation of rice in this country and reneged and went back again? How many times have we talked of importation of textiles and all that, and we keep going, take two steps forward, ten steps backwards? The rice we produce in Nigeria is better than all the imported rice. So why must we keep importing rice, spending a trillion naira on importation of rice? Okay, let's stop eating rice. Will we die? They said we couldn't make bread without the wheat coming from outside. We started using cassava and all that to mix our this thing. Do you know the difference between the bread we make and the one that they bring from outside, the one we use whole wheat to make? No. Our beer, one time, they said, oh, it was, it was not tasty. It wasn't it wasn't. If you go anywhere in the world now, they prefer Nigerian beer to the ones they brew by themselves. We are a big country. We are well endowed. And we should reduce our dependence on imports. We should be exporting, not importing. I've always wanted to ask someone who was close to the late General Sani Abacha or who worked closely with the late General Sani Abacha, what manner of man was he? You know, because he was synonymous with the military, uh, in, government. military in government. Hmm. Was he a misunderstood man? Oh, you know. Well, I um, worked closely with him for... Uh, those years that I was in the uh, Provisional Ruling Council, that was from the time I was Flag officer Commanding Western Naval Command up to his death. Um, I would say he was a very misunderstood man. Uh, most of what was blamed on the late Sani Abacha, may God grant him eternal rest, are the doings of his lieutenants. Generally, he meant well for this country. Unfortunately, it's difficult. Nigeria is a very complex country and difficult to rule. Many of your contemporaries retired from the military and went into partisan politics, but you've been quiet on the political front. Yeah, because I think that the military should not be involved in politics, and our involvement in politics has damaged the military. I think we should wait maybe until 30 years after before we start engaging ourselves in politics. When a military man retires, he is held in such high esteem in order for things. But in Nigeria, we are still in that stage in which you, know, you are still derided for being in the military. It shouldn't be like that. You spent your whole life. I have never done any other work in my life except serving this nation for 35 years. I refused joining the national shipping line where my mates were paid 100 times what I earned as an officer in the Navy. Where they go abroad, when they come back, they bring in television, cars, and all that, and all that to sell and everything. I didn't have that opportunity. I was earning 64 pounds. 
a month. But I was still happy to serve. I was more proud of wearing my uniform every day. I used to wear uniform to go to Federal Palace Hotel. I wear with my bow tie in the evening with uh, well, it my probably, it, it probably caught the eye of the ladies. No, I preferred, you know, I preferred it because that was the British. The, that's why we were trained by the British. And, you know, you, you, cannot, you cannot do something wrong if you are properly trained. I mean, I won't mess up myself when I'm in that uniform for any reason. And it's so much a part of me that even when I retired, the day after I retired, I was dressing in uniform. My wife was asking me, where are you going? I said, oh, I've forgotten. I've forgotten. You understand? I still wake up at the time I wake up as a cadet now to say my prayers, of course. And then, I, yes, uh, we should clean up our politics. We should have um, people in politics who are there to serve. Um, we should have people who are not looking to build houses or buy cars or aeroplanes and all that. We should have people who are concerned about the so-called common man on the streets. We should have people who are ready to spend their own resources. You know, I would want, for example, now if I had the opportunity to use my pension to look after the poor, we should, in this developing nation, we should have um, we should have the type of uh, Rockefellers and all that, uh, the Fords and all that who are given, given to the society. Sustainably. Sustaining the society. We wish you many happy years in retirement, thank Admiral Laila, and I thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much. I thank you for watching. I hope you'll join us again next week when View from the Top returns. Do have a good day. Bye-bye.